notes here. Okay. We we are back live here on the Quad Pod. We have a tremendous, tremendous guest joining us today here on our big program. If you want to get more information, you can go to our website, which is J I G G Y J G U I R dot com. And we have a great, great guest with us today. Dr. Antoinette Corley Newman is with us. She is a PhD. She is fantastic. She has a brand new book out there. And uh, it is available on Amazon. And uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic children's book. Doctor, tell me a little bit about this incredible book here. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited about this book. Um, as you know, it's a Halloween-driven um, book that um, comes from many stories that I used to tell my children when they were younger. And it's about the Switch Witch. And it's a little girl who is precocious and intuitive and excited to become part of what we know as the harvest treat, our harvest festival. Okay. And um, she and her friends come to town every October 31st. They get to participate in the festivities. And when she goes back to Transylvania to her family, she's always very sad because what she wants most is to be able to share with her parents and her neighbors the excitement of what she and the other children um, experienced at the Harvest Festival was sweet treats, <laughs> which we know as trick-or-treat candy. <laughs> yes. And so in this story, she just um, comes up with ways to, I guess, acquire more sweet treats and then eventually <laughs> to gain all the sweet treats and that is how she develops the Halloween ball for the warlocks and witches in Transylvania. <laughs> That's awesome. That is fantastic. So this book, you've put a lot of time and effort into this book. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the writing process, putting this together. Well, it's really interesting, I have to tell you. This is a story that I used to tell. My children are now 12, 14, and 16. And I used to tell this to them from the time that they were babies, the story of Abigail, the switch witch. And it, it actually came about because I didn't ever want them to embrace in all the candy that they got at Halloween okay. <laughs> to savor their teeth. So um, I just thought, you know what? I heard about the switch witch some time ago, didn't really know a story, so I created a story. And I would tell them the story. And my youngest, who's now 12, I think she was around five or six, and I was telling them the story at bedtime. And she goes, Mom, can I see the book? Can you read me the book? And I was like, the book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> the next morning I woke up, and I sat at my desk, and I wrote the story. And um, my kids used to tell their friends about the Switch Witch, and they were excited how they're, you know, they were going to go home and their candy, they were going to pick out their four pieces, they were going to put the rest out. We used to have this witch that had a basket, they would put it in there up by the door, she was going to take it, and she would leave them a gift. And so I started getting calls from parents going, what is the Switch Witch? What, what are your kids talking about? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I started sharing the story with my friends, um, and they were like, you need to publish this. And I was like, yep. you know, this is just for my family. This is just what we do. These are part of our traditions because we are the most traditional, the tooth fairy, the butt. Any, anything that can be, it's happening at the Newman's residence, right? That's awesome. And... Um, then during COVID, with everything that was happening, oh, this is really hard because having three kids during this time was, I really started to feel, and as a psychologist, just really bad for children and adolescents and teens and just what they were missing out on. Yep. Halloween came in. And I was like, you know, what is happening with their imagination? Because a lot of kids were 
you know, they're on their tablets, they're on their computers, oh, they're yeah. on their phones. And, and I just, in my heart, said, I need to start putting stuff out into the world to help this well balance of the emotional well being. Because, as you know, if you can imagine, if you can dream, if you can just pretend to, to not be in what we the last couple of years have encompassed, you can continue to be healthy. <laughs> you can continue oh, yeah. to grow and believe. And so I decided immediately that day, I'm going to publish this. And then I'm going to start publishing other things just to put back the creativity. Because my kids, I have to tell you, we have the best time listening to music. And we would listen to classical music. And I'd say, tell me the story. What's going on? You know, because I was like, we have to be able to just access that imagination. Because if yes. you, can't, you die, all you know is black and white. This is what's truth. This is what's not. And who makes that up? <laughs> why is that truth? And why isn't it your imagination that can't be true? So anyway, that's kind of how Abigail became, how she got into the book form. And that's where we're at. That's awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> so this book, you, you put a lot of time and effort into the character development. Tell me a little bit about some of the different character development that you did with this book. Well, it's interesting because, seriously, Abigail herself, who's the main character, is actually a little bit of all my kids. My youngest is very precocious. She, she, you can't just tell her anything and she'll be like, okay, okay, mom, that's true. She's like, mm, why? Why can't I? Why isn't it? How do I? Let me tell you why I'm going to, <laughs> you know? And so that's where that part of Abigail comes from. With um, the part of Abigail that's more adventurous and um, that's more loving and more caring. That's really my son. From the time my son, I want to say, was three or four, when he saw, he I shouldn't say the first time he saw a homeless person, but the first time that he started to comprehend yep. that this person was displaced and couldn't go anywhere, he was like, Mom, can we go to the store? Can we go get food? That's and awesome. just put it in our car so we can give it to people? And so that's the part of Abigail that's giving, that wanted to give to her. That's fantastic. It's the, the one that's just like, everything's possible. Yes. If you dream it, it could be. you can't tell me that I'm not, you know? Yeah. So that's how Abigail was really created the three of them, just things that I knew about their personalities or that I got to love about their personalities. But then there's the mom, you know, that's a little bit of me, the dad, that's <laughs> a little bit of my husband, the neighbors, different people that I've met along the way, whether it, they were in my neighborhood, whether they're in my family, whether they're my, their associates or friends or patients that I've even met. Um, because I see other stories coming out of this story. I have personalities that are going to evolve, should I say. That's awesome. But this book is just the base of a neighborhood of people that are multicultural. They don't see color. If you, When you look at the pages, and that was something when I worked with the illustrator, I said, I want everyone to look at this book and go, I can relate. It's not about being white or African-American or black or, or Hispanic or Mexican or Latino or Chinese or Asian or, or whatever. It's just about everyone coming together. And it doesn't matter what size you are. You could be tall, you could be short, you could be fat, you could be skinny, you could be whatever. Because that's really what I hope that we can get back to. You know, I think that's how... As a multi, in our multicultural family, we, I grew up first of all, and then that's how we're also raising our children, you know? That's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. Now this book, uh, you've put a lot of time and effort into this book. What do you want readers to take away from your writing? You know, it's, 
I really want one for families, young or old, um, not, doesn't matter, just fluent reading, I guess is the best way to say it. That's awesome. It's fantastic. <laughs> I actually want people to sit down and read it and create um, traditions of their own. I hope that it brings families together. I really want laughter. I want people to, to imagine Abigail and her family as their family and to walk away with just a spirit of happiness. You know, it's so funny because I think Halloween, I remember growing up and it was all about the candy, right? Yes. <laughs> and um, I think as, as having a family and just with my husband and creating traditions, how we always wanted to be something more than that. So it was always important to us, like the candy always went to the dentist who took, sent it to the troops. You know, it was always about giving back. Yep, yep. And, and that's just how we raised our family. My kids have their own organization. It's a charitable organization. They give to local and national charities every month, you know, by bridging communities together. And I'm thinking, I'm hoping, like, the, the pre-sales go back to their organization. In October, the book launches in September, but in October, which is um, anti-bullying month, the proceeds are going to four different organizations, you know? So wow. it's, I really want when people to read it to inspire them to not only to have tra to build traditions and to be family, but to look outside themselves and go, how can I now bridge unity within my community? So that's kind of, that's kind of who I am. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, no, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, as, as we get ready to go back to school, uh, it seems that they're getting ready to do, and I hate to even put this out into the world, <laughs> but there, there are rumors that there may be another lockdown and all this shenanigans. Yeah. The thing that I'm most worried about with all this stuff from, from you know, as far as kids go, mm -hmm. is that will essentially be three years now of lost education and lost opportunity, all because of whatever you want to believe is going on. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And, and I'm like, you know, I don't really care about any of the nonsense that the righties or the lefties are talking about. I just hate the fact that kids' schooling is basically being ruined Right. Because what what whatever little stupid war is going on between these two sides, right? Uh, yeah. How how do we how do we fix this, uh, or or is that possible? How do we fix this, <laughs> or is it just going to be pe people are uh, kids are just caught in the crossfire essentially? Yeah, let me let me tell you what. I, I put a lot of thought into this, even with my own children. Um, I have one going into high school, one leaving high school, one in middle school. Um, we had decided early on that when our children were in middle school that they would be homeschooled anyway. Not homeschooled because that's not me, but online school. But we're very, very much into the social aspect. Um, if you think about the history of school period, why it was brought to be. If you recall, it was not for the wealthy. It was for people that were, they didn't have the money to bring educators into their homes yep. to help their kids, right? Yeah. So when it comes to learning and being home, depending on, and let me say this, and this is a very general term, but it's my truth, depending on your home and what you're able to do, you can do the educational part at home. That's not the issue. The issue lies in the social aspect. If our children are not able to embrace the differences of the people that they interact with, whether it's in recess, whether it's in the lunchroom, 
whether it's in the classroom, where learning does happen because it's not about a book. It's really about communication. And what did you get from that? This is what I got. Let's build and bridge together. Yeah. It's about the interaction that we're missing. This is great. I would prefer to be with you in studio, but we can do this and make it happen, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. But for kids that where their brains do not fully form to their 25 and we're taking the social aspect and removing it and think about children that do not have the sources economically to say I'm going to get you someone to come into the home that you can communicate with or you're going to be able to go out and still be on the lacrosse team or you're still going to have your social aspect and your parents are trying to work and you have all this chaos this is where the issue comes, and I think as a society, as a whole, we're not even thinking about that because it's really about me, 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 me right now. Yeah. Whether it's left, right, or whatever, we forgot that we are breeding the next generation to not even to know how to communicate. Yeah. You know, we give them cell phones. Try to get a, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old to answer a, a phone. I have trouble trying to get the I have trouble trying to get the the the, the child's mother to uh to 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 answer the uh to answer the self. You know what I mean though? I mean, I experienced this on my own. I was taking my daughter somewhere and we were running late and I said, "Hey, call your it was an acting class. I said, "Call the studio, let them know that you're running about 5 minutes late, but you will be there." And she picked up the phone, she dialed the number. They answered, and she goes, hi, I'm running about five minutes late. And I was like, they don't know who you are. They don't, but it's just, and I realized, I said, ah. no. there are assumptions. There's a lot of assumptions when we start taking out the social aspects, right? Yes. And so as, as parents, as mentors, as older generations, and I'm not talking about older, meaning that you have to be like 60, 70, 80. I'm talking yeah. about older as 30, 40. You know what I mean? It's like we have a responsibility. And our responsibility is if we do go to a lockdown, what does this look like? This school system, the way that it is not working. It's not working because kids aren't learning. They're not learning academically and they're not learning socially. Because half the kids aren't even turning on their screen. Yeah. They're learning that I can show up and not be prepared. I can show up without my shoes on. I can show up in my pajamas. I can show up eating. I can show... How are you preparing them for a job? How are you preparing them to go to college? Well, How I, are you I, 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 to... I, I, just, I, I, I just wish I could get them to pick up the used Q-tips off the floor and put trash in the garbage can. <laughs> You know, don't 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 even get me started. On, we, we, we don't have we don't have enough time to, to even me, me, me get to the point where I'm like, you got to put shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, You know what I mean? And it's serious because the thing is, what's happening in classes is this may be on, but there's another screen over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're teaching our children how to not be present, how to not be present, how to not be present. It's just the I'm way it is. It. It's so strange. I, 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 I often just wish we could go back to the typewriter and just, <laughs> <laughs> just forget I'm about all this. About all <laughs> I mean, I do think that there's a need. I mean, it's really great. It's really interesting, though, because we can have these conversations. And we can have, why are people trying to live on another planet? Why are people purchasing planets? Well, that why too. Take care of the planet that we have here. Well, <laughs> yes, uh, but at the same time, I, I just wish these guys would pay their fair share of taxes because then we could uh, fix the uh, health care system and everything else. But uh, yeah, we, we, we don't have enough time to go over all, all, all the shenanigans that, that are involved with all of that. But uh, 
but but before we let you go, my friend, how do we get in touch with you on the web, social media, buy the book, everything? Okay. Well, let me show you the book for your your viewers. Yes. Have, yes. This is the book. That is awesome. Isn't that, that awesome? is fantastic? And I do happen to have the prototype of Abigail here. Oh wow! Yes, this is Abigail. you. You 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 got merch. You're you 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 you're, 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 you're like an unsigned band. I'm 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 wait, I'm waiting for you to get the 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 canned cozies and the t-shirts going. We're gonna. Uh, well, we don't have a t-shirt yet. There are, uh, next year there will be pajamas because it is. A That's awesome. Story. That's awesome. There 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 is just so you know there is a there's always an, a learning element on my end. So there is a puzzle, but it's one of those, I don't know if you've seen the wood um, block puzzles. Yes. Where it's six puzzles in one. And so there is that, you know. Um, but you can reach me as you asked at um, summitstreetbooks.com. That's the website. Dr. A. Corley Newman. Um, you can go to Antoinette. Our info at summitstreetbooks.com if you want to email me. I believe on Instagram, it's Dr. A. Corley Newman. On Facebook, I think it's switchwitch.com or it may be trickortreat.com. That's awesome. Know. That's fantastic. <laughs> Either way. And um, yes, and just. Every, it's it's for sale everywhere right now. Pre-sales again. Pre-sales go to gracegives.com, which is or grace gracegives.org, which is a yes. charitable organization that supports all local and national um, charities. And um, yeah, I that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I look forward to chatting with you more again. You are a uh, fantastic, such a great personality. Uh, thanks for writing this incredible book and thanks for joining us this week here on our program. Uh, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope that it does. Um, my book, this little thing that we just did does inspire someone to go, how can I make a difference today? And, um, that you will make a difference. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, have yourself a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, you doctor. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. There okay. she goes. That is the good doctor, Antoinette Newman. That is the Quad Pod this week. And.